remnants of the Iroquois village. In Ontario, Canada, excavations have unearthed an outstanding 35,000 artifacts at a new dig site. But that's not all. The archaeological dig also unearthed traces of a late Iroquois village that would have been functional somewhere between the years 1300 and 1600. At the beginning of the dig, experts were only expecting to find a few artifacts, but in October of 2020, they had so far uncovered more than they knew what to do with. Among the 35,000 objects found were carbonized pieces of food like beans and corn, animal bones, tools made of stone, and cooking instruments. According to a report from the Smithsonian in magazine, the team also identified 25 structural features that included hearths and other evidence of human activity. Pottery specimens found at the dig site confirmed that the researchers had uncovered a full Iroquois village. Local indigenous groups collaborated with archaeologists to uncover the full truth of the previously unknown village. Experts believe that the area was hugely important several thousand years ago and a crucial resource area that caused the nomadic people to return again and again. This part of Canada has been occupied occupied for at least 10,000 years and is ripe with a history that many Canadians don't get a lot of opportunities to learn about, making the dig incredibly important for the preservation of the ancient Iroquois heritage. Dragon Skull our next discovery today is a giant skull that washed up on a beach in Dorset in the United Kingdom. And yes, I'm talking about a giant dragon skull. This did happen a few years ago and it definitely freaked a few people out. Of course, the skull did not belong to a physical dragon from our past, but actually from the set of Game of Thrones. It actually occurred because of a publicity stunt concocted by the media to celebrate the third season of the TV show before it aired. Dragons are obviously not real, no matter how hard you want to believe. Or are they? Just kidding. However, this is a two-for-one story. Aside from the obviously fake dragon skull, in 2017, Chinese villagers discovered a mysterious skeleton that measured 60 feet and looked a lot like a dragon. This happened in the north of China, and residents from the nearby city were positive that the mysterious bones they captured on film were the remains of a mythical flying serpent. This story was reported by The Sun, and at the time it was published, nobody was sure exactly what animal the remains belonged to. The skeleton was found stretched across the grass with a huge skull and two small arms. However, the dragon did not appear to have wings, and so far no professional archaeologists or biologists have come forward to discuss the creature. Either it was a hoax or a very real dragon that perished hundreds of years ago and sat rotting in a random Chinese field. Gates of Hell a new archaeological breakthrough has uncovered what is being called the Gate to Hell. The ruin was discovered at a site in Turkey, and thousands of years ago, it could have represented the doors to the underworld. The ruin was actually discovered inside of a cave that has been described as incredibly lethal because it contains deadly fumes. This cave emits poisonous gases, and according to a professor from the University of Salento, who had been present when the ruins were discovered, birds that entered the poisonous cave died almost immediately. The Gate to Hell was part of a larger dig site around the ancient city of Hierapolis. The cave itself is basically a natural phenomenon that opens in the earth from which poisonous gases escape. There's nothing magical about it, it's basically a thermal spring except way more dangerous. But in ancient days, it's not surprising that some superstitious people may have believed that such a horrifying geological formation could have led into the underworld. So it makes sense that such a grand structure was built within its mouth. And according to experts, it was likely that those who traveled to the gate would have used birds to test how dangerous and deadly it was while priests would have sacrificed animals to the gods of the dead by shoving them into the cave through the gate to hell. Would you dare visit this place? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you are new here, as we have lots of videos coming up. Tomb of the God King Archaeologists working in the north of Guatemala have uncovered the tomb of someone they believe could have been a Mayan god king. The tomb dates way back to somewhere between 300 and 350 AD, and it's the oldest royal tomb out of several that have been discovered inside the ancient city of El Peru Huaca. The god king's name was likely King Techan Ak of the Huac dynasty, and he could have ruled in the early part of the 4th century. Even though no inscribed artifacts were found at the scene to positively identify the remains, archaeologists believe that the presence of a portrait mask made of jade could indicate that the man in the tomb was indeed a king. A similar mask was found back in the 1960s when researchers discovered the earliest Mayan royal tomb ever, which dated back to the very first century AD. As you might already know, the Maya people tended to 
to revere their kings as divine rulers, and after death they often treated them as living souls. To them, every king was a god king. After they were buried, the king's tomb would become a place of majesty similar to how the ancient Saxon kings in England were always buried under impressive cathedrals, and their tombs would then become places of great spiritual wealth. Ancient Roman Nanotechnology Believe it or not, nanotechnology may have been invented far earlier than we think. In fact, the very first example of nanotechnology being used has recently been discovered by scientists, and it dates back 1600 years. It all comes down to a Roman chalice known as Lysurgis Cup, which changes color depending on the direction at which the light hits the cup. While it may just seem like a simple trick, scientists have recently come out to say that the cup's properties are because of 4th century nanotechnology. The goblet turns green when light hits it from the front, and it turns red when light hits it from the back. Researchers in England have determined that the cup's unique properties have a lot to do with special particles. There are particles of silver and gold which are embedded inside of the glass and are as small as only 50 nanometers. To make sense of that, 50 nanometers is only around the size of the common cold. That means you literally can't see it with your eyes, and it wasn't an accident that the nanotechnology was applied to this famous cup either. The work done was so precise that it works on the level of electrons. When the light hits the cup, the electrons inside vibrate in a particular way to reflect light differently depending on the position of the person looking at the cup. I don't need to tell you that this is a pretty amazing use of science considering the time period. How did they do it? Well, that is still a bit of a mystery. We have to assume that somebody in ancient Rome had access to a very large brain and a lot of very specific chemicals. Secrets of Angkor Angkor Wat has astounded people across the world ever since it was rediscovered by a French explorer back in 1858. The French explorer once described Angkor Wat as being grander than anything left to us by Greece or Rome, and that is still true today. Angkor Wat is the largest temple complex in the world. It was constructed around the year 1150, and it covers an area four times greater than Vatican City. It also attracts roughly two million tourists a year, and is on the flag of Cambodia and on Cambodian currency. While most of the various temples have been explored and documented in the last 100 years, new technology using lasers has revealed an even more complex city than researchers previously could have imagined. According to the BBC, by using a sophisticated remote sensing technology, mounting it onto a helicopter and then scanning the countryside, a team of international researchers have recorded the topography of what Angkor Wat would have looked like thousands of years ago, and quite frankly, it's truly amazing. They discovered how highways, temples, elaborate waterways, and all the features of an advanced cityscape that we can't see because it's all hidden beneath the trees or long since faded. The moral of the story is that Angkor Wat was already impressive, but now we're learning that it was perhaps the most impressive ancient city of its time. Buddha's Birthplace Lumbini has long been recognized as the birthplace of Siddhartha Gautama who went on to become the Buddha. This was a very real person who had much of his life and his teachings chronicled. However, even though his birthplace is known, many scholars have argued about when exactly he was born. It stretches anywhere from between 623 BC and 340 BC. Up until now, the best evidence of any Buddhist structure at Lumbini only dated back to the 3rd century BC during the era of the Emperor Ashoka. However, a new archaeological discovery reported by the BBC claims that the earliest Buddhist shrine ever was just recently discovered at the birthplace of the man himself. Researchers unearthed an ancient timber structure buried inside the original Maya Devi temple in Lumbini, which by the way is in Nepal. That dates back to the 6th century BC. The timber structure is an old Buddhist shrine, and it may once and for all settle the dispute about exactly when the Buddha was born. While this may not be super interesting for everyone, a lot of people can appreciate the discovery of the oldest evidence of a Buddhist shrine anywhere on our planet, which is exactly what this archaeological discovery is. Dino Fossil Let's move from Buddhism to the world of the dinosaurs. An incredible dinosaur skeleton has recently been found that dates back 110 million years. And while archaeologists and paleontologists find cool dinosaur fossils all the time that are really old, this one is so perfectly preserved that it looks like a statue. Just look at the skull on this beast. It's simply fascinating. It could honestly be a prop in Game of Thrones rather than a biological fossil. This piece of history was found in Alberta, Canada, which is home to one of the richest fossil deposits in the world. The dinosaur wasn't a T-Rex, but it was a very cool armored monster known as the Notosaur. 
The dino came equipped with a body of scaled armor, but it only ate plants. According to the Royal Tyrrell Museum of Paleontology, this Canadian discovery is, in fact, the best preserved armored dinosaur in the world. It includes skin and armor, and the fossil is 100% complete from the snout to the hips. Even more incredible is that it took over 7,000 years to prepare the specimen to be researched and put on display. Next time you're in Canada, stop by and see this amazing prehistoric beast. Ancient Chariot in the country of Bulgaria, archaeologists have found the amazing remains of a full Thracian carriage complete with two horses. Not only that, but they found the remains buried upright, meaning that the chariot was buried sitting on its wheels and the horses standing on their feet. The horses and carriage were both found inside of a Thracian tomb with a bunch of other great artifacts. The discovery was also made close to the same location where the exact same research team uncovered a ridiculous hoard of gold just the year before. And even though the area had been pillaged by looters trying to strike it rich, the chariot and horses were completely untouched. According to a professor from the National Archaeology Institute at the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, this find is unique and unlike anything else ever uncovered in Bulgaria. Researchers think that the chariot and the horses were put inside of an elaborate resting place that required them to be lowered into it using harnesses after they were killed. If you were wondering who the Thracians were, they were a group of tribes who inhabited much of Central Europe back in the times of the Trojan War. Don't forget, the famous slave revolt leader Spartacus was actually a Thracian warrior. The Cursed Black Sarcophagus For our final entry, let's stay in the ancient world. A new Egyptian sarcophagus has begun to reveal its disturbing secrets. This sarcophagus is known as the Cursed Black Sarcophagus, and it is probably the most horrifying thing you've ever seen come out of Egypt. It was initially excavated from the ancient city of Alexandria, and it's taken the world by storm. The sarcophagus itself is huge, built of black granite, and it had three skeletons in it at the time it was opened. The tomb dates way back, somewhere between 305 and 30 BC in the Ptolemaic period, and it was said to have come with a curse. Luckily, none of the people involved in the opening of the sarcophagus have been eaten alive by scarabs, haunted by mummies with paranormal powers, or stricken by sudden disease, so the curse might have been a dud. However, the sarcophagus was so disturbing that there wasn't really much need for a curse in the end. Out of the three skeletons, one belonged to a woman, the second belonged to a man, and the third belonged to a much older man who was unusually tall for the time, standing at just over six feet. But what was really gross about this discovery was the giant pool of red slime inside the bottom of the sarcophagus. The blood-colored gunk looked a lot like a witch's brew. After the discovery was published, over 30,000 people signed a totally ridiculous online petition asking to drink the red liquid so that they could gain the powers of the mummy. Obviously, nobody was allowed to drink the liquid, and research is still ongoing to discover all there is to know about this mysterious black sarcophagus. It's just one of many fascinating finds to have come out of Egypt in recent years. Cheers. From the mystery of sunken cities scattered across the globe to a new discovery that could lead to Atlantis, here are 10 mysterious things found underwater. Pavlo Petri Sunken City one of the oldest submerged cities in the world was found off the southern coast of Greece just a few years ago. Research from 2009 revealed that the sunken city of Pavlopetri covered at least nine acres of land and was inhabited somewhere around 5,000 years ago. Scientists are claiming that the city was sunk at around 1,000 BC because of earthquakes that shifted the landscape. But even after 5,000 years, the city is fairly well preserved. Scientists from the University of Nottingham were even able to create a 3D reconstruction of what the city would have looked Looked like before it shrank. It was not a big city for sure. It was likely constructed as a smaller center of commerce for the Minoan civilization and the Mycenaean civilization. But because it was constructed so close to the beach, it's probably not that big of a mystery as to why it fell into the sea. Researchers have so far discovered at least 15 homes, large storage containers built from clay, tools, everyday artifacts, and statues. And while experts are calling it the sunken city of Pavlo Petri, the truth is that they don't actually know its original name, the exact role it played in the ancient world of Greece, or why it's not mentioned in many historical texts. In all likelihood, this was a town that sprouted at the edge of the ocean, thrived for maybe 100 years, then was swept away and erased from the history books. Loki's Castle 
One of the more mysterious things found underwater is a place called Loki's Castle, and it was found deep beneath the Atlantic Ocean somewhere between Greenland and Norway. Unfortunately, it's not actually the castle of the legendary Norse god of mischief. It's more of a collection of geothermal vents that look a lot like a castle, and they spew out fluids that can reach ridiculous temperatures of up to 570 degrees Fahrenheit, but within this underwater castle of sediment is the real treasure. Scientists have now found microorganisms in this place for the first time that they believe are connected to the simple cells which initially populated Earth and began the transition into complex cellular life roughly 2 billion years ago. Researchers are calling the microorganisms Loki Archaeota, or Loki for short. They were retrieved from a couple miles under the ocean surface very near to the hydrothermal vent system of Loki's castle. The discovery is providing some insight into how exactly larger and more complex cell types, the standard building blocks for plants and animals, evolved from simple microbes. This may all sound very confusing, but we're essentially talking about the missing link between the simple microbes dominant on our early planet and the complex cells that make up all life forms. According to an evolutionary microbiologist from Uppsala University, we now know that the exact type of microbial ancestors we descended from, or grew out of. Microbial life originated on Earth somewhere around 3.5 billion years ago, but we did not have complex cellular life until 1.5 billion years later. Thanks to the discoveries at Loki's castle, now we have a better understanding of how exactly that transition occurred. Vandenberg Shipwreck If you found yourself diving off the coast of Florida, you might stumble upon the wreckage of the Vandenberg. This amazing vessel was sunk back in 2009 so that it could become an artificial reef. It's now sitting under roughly 140 feet 42 meters of water, 7 miles from Key West. At first glance, it looks like the shell of some great battleship. There are giant satellite dishes sprouting off the back of the ship, there's a flag still flapping in the watery currents, and now there are fish moving in where once there were men running about and shouting orders. The Vandenberg was the second largest ship ever sunk at the time to create a reef, and since then it has been the destination for lots of enthusiastic divers. Novice divers are able to check out the radar dishes, to swim along the artillery gun turrets on the old military ship, and more experienced divers can actually go into the cargo holds, exploring the elevator shafts and the hallways. This isn't really a mysterious find beneath the ocean, but it is still pretty cool. The largest radar dish on the ship was even used in the 1999 movie Virus when a laser blew the dish right off the ship. Of course, there won't be any more lasers attacking the ship now. The giant radar dish will instead be a shelter where fish can breed and live in peace. The Yonaguni Complex the Yonaguni Complex is arguably one of the most mysterious things ever found underwater. It's located off the coast of Japan, and speculation says that the ruins of this monument date back at least 10,000 years. However, there has been some debate whether the formation was made by human hands or if it's entirely natural. It was first discovered in 1986 by divers looking for hammerhead sharks, and it was subsequently explored by a marine geologist from the University of Ryukyu in Japan. After nearly two decades of investigations, most scientists agreed that because of all the right angles, the strategically placed holes, and the perfectly designed aesthetics, it had human influence at some point in time. The complex consists of a huge pyramid in the center, what could have possibly been castles, some evidence of roads, and very eroded monuments. Some people are claiming this is the Japanese equivalent to the lost city of Atlantis. But the big mystery here is that if the complex was crafted by humans, who exactly crafted it? The monument itself is built of sandstone and mudstone, both of which date back at least 20 million years. It suggests that the monument was originally natural, but was then carved by people sometime during the last ice age. This was a time when what is now underwater was above land, and the location of the site was actually connected all the way to Taiwan. However, the Agency for Cultural Affairs in Japan denies that this place is a historical cultural site. Researchers and divers have made several trips to the site and claim to have found pottery and other evidence of human activity. It kinda makes you wonder what exactly it is the government is hiding. Underwater Spider if you were terrified of spiders already, wait until you meet the mysterious underwater spider that spends its whole life beneath the surface. This is known as the diving bell spider, and it breathes air yet lives underwater. It can be found mostly throughout Europe and northern Asia, and it has unique scuba diving skills that it uses to weave silk webs under the water to create a bubble filled with air. These spiders basically create their own scuba suits so that they can live underwater and eat unsuspecting people. 
No, they don't actually eat humans, but they do like to munch on aquatic insects. They live inside their bubbles by constantly transporting air from the surface, which they trap using the fine hairs on their bodies and then bringing the air into their web bubbles under the water. Inside these bubbles, the spider will hunt, mate, and lay its eggs. The only time the spider goes to the surface is when it needs to replenish its oxygen. However, the spider does have a few mysteries, the first of which is that the spider actually uses its bubbles as a physical gill that it can use to exchange gases within the water it lives in. This is quite similar to how a fish's gills work. Researchers from Germany experimented with bell spiders and aquariums, and through extensive research discovered that these spiders breathe about 70% of their needed oxygen using the physical gill of their bubble. The Skeletons of Rupkund Lake the remote Rupkund Lake in northern India contains a disturbing mystery. A British forest guide first found this lake back in 1942, and ever since then, experts have struggled to figure out why the small lake is filled with hundreds of human skeletons. The lake itself is a picturesque valley, about 16,000 feet above sea level, usually frozen over with ice, and it's also known as Skeleton Lake. Over the years, a lot of theories have surfaced, but nobody is still 100% sure who the skeletons belong to or how they ended up in the lake. Back in the 40s, people originally thought the skeletons were the remains of Japanese soldiers from the war who died while crossing the Himalayas, but more recent evidence suggests that the bones are way too old for that. Some theories suggested an epidemic of disease, a mass ritual, or even a natural disaster. According to History.com, the leading theory was that a hailstorm struck a group of pilgrims, sent giant balls of ice crashing into their heads, and they ended up tumbling into the lake. There are approximately 38 skeletons inside of Skeleton Lake, and a recent study published in a Nature magazine says that there are three different groups of them. There are 23 men and women of Asian ancestry, 14 humans with Mediterranean ancestry, and a single individual from Southeast Asia. The skeletons were also found to be from many years apart. There are about 1,000 years separating each of the groups. This basically dispels all of the original theories, and it's only worked to boggle scientists even more. Lake Michigan Stonehenge If you can't make it all the way to England to check out Stonehenge, you might only need to take a trip to Michigan. Recently, in the middle of searching for some sunken ships, a professor of underwater archaeology from Northwestern Michigan College stumbled upon an ancient rock complex under the waves that looks a whole lot like Stonehenge. This happened in Lake Michigan, and the stones discovered are believed to be around 9,000 years old. One of the stones even has a carving of a mastodon on it, and these animals went extinct more than 10,000 years ago. It's really making scientists question who could have possibly built the structure in the largest lake in all of the United States, and when exactly they made it. It must have come from a time before there was any water in the lake, and it must have been built by an ancient civilization on the continent many thousands of years before European explorers arrived. The most uncanny and mysterious part is that it looks exactly like Stonehenge, only smaller. Why were so many different civilizations building these ritualistic rock structures in ancient times? It really is quite a mystery. Ancient Greek Computer one underwater mystery that has been boggling scientists for years is something known as the Antikythera Mechanism, also known as the very first computer. It sat at the bottom of the sea for over 2,000 years before it was discovered. The mechanism was originally retrieved from a shipwreck way back in the early 1900s, and scholars are still trying to make sense of the depictions on the device. What's really unique about the ancient Greek computer is that it appears to have traces of technology that are far too modern. For example, it seems to have gears with triangular teeth like you would find inside of a clock, and it even appears to have a ring divided into different degrees just like the protractor you would use in class. When comparing it to other artifacts from antiquity, nothing as sophisticated has ever been found. To date, most scientists can agree that the mechanism was used for tracking the paths of the planets, the sun, and the moon. And of course, there are some fringe scientists who have claimed the mechanism came from an alien ship. Unfortunately, it most likely did not come from space. The mechanism is about the size of a clock, and judging by the fragments found, it was probably housed in a wooden case. After scrutinous inspections of all the interior inscriptions and dials, experts have figured out that the device was likely nothing but a very fancy calendar with a lot of moving pieces. It would have showed the celestial time of the sun and moon, along with their phases, and even the timing of lunar and solar eclipses. According to Smithsonian Magazine, researchers also believe that one of the mechanisms showed the timing of major athletic events such as the Greek Olympics. SS Gersapa 
a deep sea exploration company recovered roughly 48 tons of silver from a British ship that had been hit with a torpedo back in World War II. The name of the boat was the SS Gersapa, and it was sunk off the coast of Ireland in 1941. Since then, it sat over 15,000 feet under the ocean. To date, this is the heaviest recovery of metals ever from a shipwreck, and apparently, the company is going to be keeping 80% of the haul after expenses and after giving 20% to the British Treasury. They literally pulled up crates and crates of precious metal that are worth a fortune. The Daily Mail reported that the exploration team brought up at least 1,200 bars of silver worth roughly $37 million. The biggest mystery here is why nobody went scrounging for the silver sooner, and how many more precious vessels are scattered around the islands of Great Britain and Ireland. Lost Highway to Atlantis there has not been much proof that the lost city of Atlantis is real. Unfortunately, it's just not a thing that has been proved. However, one of the more convincing pieces of archaeology that could have something to do with Atlantis is known as Bimini Road. It's an underwater rock formation located near Bohemian Island in the Bahamas, sitting about 18 feet beneath the surface. The road runs straight for half a mile before ending in a hook shape. The road itself is made up of rectangular limestone blocks, and they almost all appear to have been cut with right angles. Of course, they have been weathered dramatically with time, but several thousand years ago they could have looked like giant underwater bricks of limestone. Basically, this very well could have been a road that led to Atlantis. If Atlantis were as magnificent as people say, it would not be surprising to know that there was an enormous road leading to its front gates. The Mini Road is also in the right area, as there have been a lot of theories about Atlantis sitting dormant on the bottom of the ocean near the Bahamas or somewhere in the Caribbean. Do you have any opinions on these incredible underwater mysteries? Blueberry Earth out of all the discoveries on the list, I have chosen the weirdest to start us off. This discovery has no basis in reality, but it is pretty cool. We have now discovered what would happen if our planet suddenly turned into a giant pile of blueberries. Is it absurd? Absolutely. Do you want to know the answer? Probably yes. A recent paper submitted the result of a research project done by a computational neuroscientist at the University of Oxford. If the Earth spontaneously transformed into a pile of blueberries, the first effect would be a huge reduction of gravity. If you were a person living on Earth when this happened, the first thing you would notice other than the world turning into giant blueberries would be a feeling in your stomach like you were falling down an elevator shaft. That would be because your weight would drop by 87%. For example, if you had weighed 150 pounds before, you would only weigh 20 pounds on the blueberry earth. Next, the blueberry planet would begin to collapse under its own gravitational pressure. Giant bubbles would burst from the surface, flinging huge chunks of blueberry into space. Within seconds, the interior of the planet would turn into a very thick blueberry jam. There would be volcanoes of blueberry juice, followed by the worst earthquake ever. Everything would fall towards the center of the planet. At the same time, everything would heat up to a ridiculous temperature until the environment was nothing but boiling jam and hissing steam. The final result would be a world with an atmosphere of steam and an ocean of blueberry jam with a hot core of blueberry ice. Yes, this research was completely ridiculous, but it was done by real scientists, and it's a pretty awesome some discovery. Mummified Dog in a Tree After 20 years, a dog that got mummified inside of a tree was finally discovered. The dog had been nicknamed Stucky, which is either hilarious or cruel depending on your disposition. Stucky was discovered in the hollow of a chestnut oak that was being chopped up by loggers in Georgia. Experts who have investigated the mummified remains of the canine claim he had probably been chasing something tantalizing up the tree 20 years ago when he got stuck. He probably got into the bottom of the tree while chasing a raccoon or a squirrel, then climbed up into the hollow and got stuck. There, the dog's body mummified. This happened because the inside of the tree made the perfect preservation chamber. It was dry and the tree itself would have absorbed most of the moisture and kept the dog from rotting. The draft going up the hollow of the tree would have carried the scent of the dead animal away, preventing insects and other organisms from breaking down the dog's remains. Nicely enough, the workers who originally discovered the dog inside the tree donated it to the Forest World, a tree museum in Waycross, Georgia. If you ever happen to be in the area, go check out the preserve pup for yourself. What do you think of this discovery? Is it cool? Is it sad? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The Peanut Worm 
Something known as the peanut worm is making people very uncomfortable. According to Australian Geographic, the peanut worm is a creature that lives in the darkest depths of the ocean and it also happens to be a very suggestive life form. As you can tell by the images of the peanut worm, it looks like a certain something that I won't bother saying out loud. It was discovered back in 2017 after scientists and technicians completed a long expedition in which they mapped a previously unexplored stretch of ocean near Australia. The mapping took place roughly 20,000 feet below the surface of the ocean in a place where the water is so cold and the pressure is so brutal that no human person could survive. While scientists were researching the area, they discovered the peanut worm. Apparently, this worm has not changed much in the last 40 million years. That's because at such a depth, most of the life that thrives in the abyss has had no need to change and is basically unaffected by everything else going on in the surface world. Peanut worms are not very large. They reproduce asexually or sexually depending, I guess, on their mood. They usually live in shallow burrows or in the discarded shells of other critters, making them basically impossible to find. It's like trying to locate an earthworm at the bottom of the ocean. Even after the team found the peanut worm, they couldn't 100% identify it as a new species. There is still a bit of research to be done before it's official. However, researchers are hoping that once the peanut worm is designated as a totally new species, it will keep the name for future generations to enjoy. Mole Rat Kidnappers Here is a disturbing one for you. Naked mole rats are kidnappers. People all over the world love these critters because of their weird superpowers, their horribly ugly features, and their explicit nudity. But new information is saying that mole rats actually kidnap the babies from rival colonies and then turn them into slaves. Mole rats are already considered freaks of nature, especially since they are supposedly immune to pain, they define the aging process, and they can live for a startling amount of time without oxygen. Now that we're adding kidnapping to the list, mole rats are freakier than ever. What you might not know about these animals is that they are highly social. These little creatures only grow to be 4 inches in length, but they live in large colonies as fully cooperative individuals. There can be roughly 300 workers in a single colony, making them the most functional social mammals around. In fact, they are very similar to ants and bees. One queen produces the pups, and all the other mole rats do as she commands. But new research from an evolutionary biologist with Washington University suggests that sometimes one colony of mole rats will kidnap the babies of another colony of mole rats and then use them as non-reproductive workers. That means they will not allow the kidnapped mole rats to breed in any capacity, downgrading their life to essential slavery. In other words, they literally steal babies and then use them as part of their workforce without letting them procreate. What kind of savage animals are these? Caterpillar Zombie Outbreak it's time to look at a very real zombie outbreak. Luckily, this virus is not found in humans, but it does have a devastating effect on caterpillars. According to a report from the National Post, a new zombie virus is causing caterpillars to explode in perhaps one of the most disgusting deaths anywhere in the animal kingdom. A researcher from the Wildlife Trust in England was in the middle of a butterfly survey when he spotted a dead caterpillar hanging off a leaf. After the initial discovery, a whole lot of research went on. The final results showed that a type of virus was taking over caterpillars in the area and turning them into vessels for spreading the disease even further. It's known as the baculovirus, and it stops the caterpillar from being able to molt, which encourages the caterpillar to eat and get larger, which in turn creates more virus inside its body. And here's where things get nasty. When the caterpillar is big and fat and full of more virus cells, this triggers something in its brain, forcing the caterpillar to climb high onto a leaf. Then, before it can die, the virus will release a special enzyme which liquefies the tissue of the insect. If the caterpillar is lucky, it will be quickly eaten by a bird that spots it from the sky. If the caterpillar is not lucky, its insides turn to liquid and it explodes. When it explodes, the virus rains down from the leaf, infecting whatever insects are unfortunate enough to be caught in a storm of caterpillar guts. As you can imagine, this is pretty horrific. It probably does not mean the end of all caterpillar life in the world, but it's kind of amazing that there's an actual zombie virus taking over the brains of caterpillars and causing them to explode. The Infamous Water Bear New research has revealed the one creature that will outlive all life on the planet. It's being called the water bear because of its odd resemblance to a fat bear with eight legs. There's no denying that it is a weirdly cute critter, even if it is microscopic, but what makes the water bear so special is that it will still be alive on planet Earth in 10 billion years, long after humans have gone extinct. 
It's known properly as the tardigrade, and this little critter will continue to thrive until the sun stops shining. New research has found that every catastrophic event that has ever plagued the Earth has done literally nothing to stop the water bear from surviving and thriving. It's basically indestructible, and it has fascinated scientists for years. The critter can go about 30 years without food, it can endure temperatures far past the boiling point, and it can stay alive in the inhospitable vacuum of space. A study from the Oxford University shows that the only way to wipe out the water bear would be to boil all of the world's oceans, but that is impossible even in the worst case scenario. An exploding star would need to be 0.14 light years from us to produce enough energy to boil all the water on Earth, and that's impossible. While it is definitive that the water bear is essentially the pinnacle of evolution, dating back over 500 million years and still going strong, the most exciting thing to come from this bizarre discovery is that water bears are the perfect example of how alien life can thrive on inhospitable planets. Theoretically, creatures similar to the water bear could live on inhospitable planets with poisonous atmospheres and extreme temperatures, and they could give way to life far more complex and extreme than we could ever imagine. Of course, I'm talking about lava monsters. Hot Universe a new study from Ohio State University has shown that the universe is getting hotter. That's right, not only is the world heating up, but the entire universe has been getting hotter for the past 10 billion years. The study probed the thermal history of the entire universe and found that the mean temperature of gases across the expanse of space has been increasing. Apparently, the universe is 10 times hotter than it was 10 billion years ago. The reason why is incredibly interesting. As the universe has evolved, gravity has continued to pull dark matter and gas together to form galaxies and galaxy clusters. As all of this happens, the drag of all that matter being forced into galaxies is so violent that the gas is heated up. While the vacuum of space is still cold enough to freeze you in seconds, the gas farther away in the universe is getting hotter and hotter. However, because the universe is constantly expanding, the gases that are the hottest are the ones that are the farthest away, so we will probably never come into contact with them ever. Secret Cinema a secret cinema has been discovered in the most unlikely place. Beneath Paris, there are hundreds of miles of tunnels, the majority of which are sealed off to the public. While on a training exercise, members of the force squad who are responsible for policing the catacombs and tunnels beneath Paris came upon a closed door marked building site, no access. But they knew there was no actual building site there, so the force members broke through the door, where they then found a tunnel leading to a desk, and beyond the desk, a giant cave that had been cut into the rock to create an underground amphitheater. It had a full-size video screen, projection equipment, and a huge variety of films. There was even a smaller cave that had been transformed into a restaurant and bar fully stocked with whiskey and other spirits. According to a news report from The Guardian, when police came back a few days later with experts, the phone lines and electricity lines had been cut, and the mysterious underground society who had been running the secret cinema had left a note on the floor warning the police not to try and find them. Then, a photographer who claimed to be close to the group told a local radio station that the authorities have no idea what's really located in the tunnels beneath Paris. Even though they shut the one cinema down, he claimed there are at least a dozen more just like it. The Oldest Artwork the oldest figurative artwork ever has been found in a cave in the Borneo jungle. In terms of famous artwork, this one definitely isn't going to win any awards. It's a simple cave drawing that depicts wild cattle and was painted using iron oxide. The painting is impressive because it was created roughly 40,000 years ago and the cave in which it was found even had more recent hand stencils of human figures that researchers believe to be roughly 20,000 years old. Even though the drawings were initially discovered in 1994, the findings were not announced until recently in a scientific journal. The researchers still don't know who the mystery civilization was that created such drawings previous to the last ice age. If you want to talk about the oldest artwork ever, researchers believe it to be a series of red lines that date back roughly 73,000 years. But this stuff is little more than early humans painting the walls of a cave with their hands, not intentionally creating images of figures. Surprising Gibbon when archaeologists excavated the tomb of Lady Sia in 2004, the grandmother of the old Chinese emperor Qin Shi Huang, they discovered something seriously unexpected. Not only did the tomb contain Lady Sia's burial, but it also contained 12 pits stacked up with animal remains. 
They found the skeletons of a leopard, a lynx, a black bear, a crane, many domesticated mammals, and a mysterious gibbon. It's the gibbon that is really exciting. This is because there are only six living species of gibbon that are native to China. The newly found skull inside of the tomb did not belong to any of the living species. Scientists had to give it a new genus and a new species name. They ended up calling the gibbon Junzi, which is the Chinese term for gentlemen, as gibbons were thought to be noble throughout much of Chinese history. But the big mystery here is how the creature got into the tomb and what happened to its species. The burial site is at least 2300 years old, and the gibbon has since gone extinct. In fact, it's the first ape on record, according to live science, that has gone extinct since the last ice age. According to a professor of biology at the University College London, the gibbon likely lived in China during the time of Lady Sia, but it went extinct quickly after because of human activity and environmental factors. From a random glowing rock to a woman found inside a tree, here are 10 of the strangest things found in unexpected places. Glowing Rock while a man was searching for rocks on a beach in Michigan in 2018, he stumbled upon a mind-blowing discovery. Sitting among the thousands of ordinary pebbles on the shore of Lake Superior, the guy found a glowing rock. According to a report from CBS News, this guy found what is known as euperlite, and it's a rock that glows in such a way as to make it look like a fluorescent orb, or there is lava glowing through the cracks in the rock. It almost looks like something you would expect to find on an alien planet. After this guy found the rock on the beach, he went online to try and get some info but couldn't find any. So he went back to the beach with a black light and discovered that there were dozens of them along the shore. He filled a bag with them, then posted them for sale online. One of the buyers was the Michigan State University. They purchased some of the rocks to study and after several months determined that the guy on the beach had happened upon a totally new type of rock. He's now being called the Christopher Columbus of rocks. He is even giving out tours at Lake Superior where you can find your own Uberlite rock. Man grows into a tree. You can't go very far outside without bumping into a tree. You expect to find trees everywhere, but the last place you expect to find a tree is growing out of a guy's stomach inside of a cave. This next story is totally bizarre. A man was murdered roughly 40 years ago and was never found, until recently. A seed from a fig tree that had been in his stomach gradually grew for 40 years into a large tree. The guy was killed during the conflict between the Greeks and Turks in 1974, a conflict that displaced at least 200,000 people. His body was apparently taken into a cave to be disposed of. Because this guy had eaten a fig previously to being murdered, it started to grow in his stomach after he died using the scant bit of light coming into the cave. Then, the tree was found in 2011 by a researcher who was curious about how it had ended up inside of a cave. He was especially curious because there were no other fig trees in the area. When the researcher went to investigate, he was very surprised to find a human body underneath the tree tangled in with its roots. This is one of those coincidences that seems too ridiculous to be true, but it really did happen. Talk about the circle of life. Glasses baked into bread. Nobody purchases a loaf of bread expecting to find a pair of glasses in it, but that's exactly what happened back in 2016 when an unsuspecting customer purchased a loaf of bread, went home, and found the baker's glasses baked into it. I'm not even sure what to categorize this under. It's ridiculous, goofy, and definitely unexpected. The photo was originally posted online by a Reddit user, and since then, it has gone viral. However, the baker has yet to come forward claiming responsibility for this bread mishap. It is unclear how exactly anyone could drop their spectacles into the dough and completely forget about them while baking the bread. And if you're thinking it wasn't the baker, it definitely was. You can tell by the position of the glasses that the bread rose around them, kind of like the jungle swallowing an abandoned building. This was definitely the fault of a sloppy baker. Have you ever lost anything inside the food you were cooking? It could happen. I saw someone find a fake fingernail in a cake. Let me know your story in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on the next videos. Message in a Bottle the oldest message in a bottle ever discovered happened a couple years ago in 2018. The bottle was found in Australia and the message was dated from 1886. On any given trip to the beach, you can typically expect to find some kind of human trash, be it a bottle, a can, or some candy wrappers, but you never expect to find a legitimate message in a bottle. It must have been floating out at sea for over 130 years before a resident of Perth came upon it on Wedge Island. According to the Guinness World Records, the oldest message in a bottle ever found was 108 years old, 
and it turned up in Germany in 2015. This newest message beats the old one by over 20 years. After it was discovered, researchers from Australia and Germany worked together to verify its authenticity. The note had originally been written in German, and it was apparently part of a naval experiment conducted from between 1864 and 1933 with the intention of learning more about ocean currents. Thousands of bottles had been thrown into various oceans from many different German ships, with each bottle containing a message in which was written the date the bottle was thrown overboard, the exact coordinates of that time, the name of the ship, the home port, and the route of travel. There was also a note attached asking whoever found the bottle to return it to the German Naval Observatory or nearest German consulate so that the research could be completed. Ancient Viking Sword in Sweden, an eight-year-old girl discovered one of the oldest Viking swords ever in a place it had no right being. It all happened when the girl was enjoying a day at a lake with her father when she found the sword buried in the mud. At first, she thought it was a stick, but according to Fox News, it soon became apparent that what she had was a piece of history. The family contacted an archaeologist the next day, and that archaeologist later determined that the sword was 1500 years old. That means it was from the Iron Age. The archaeologist also said it was the first sword of its kind ever to be found in Scandinavia. So what was an ancient sword doing on the shore of a random Swedish lake? Well, a museum researcher speculated that the area could have been a place of sacrifice. Upon further inspection, even more artifacts were discovered. A brooch from around the same era was found, along with a coin estimated to be from the 18th century. Giant Chunk of Quartz a giant chunk of quartz has been found in Arkansas worth roughly three and a half million dollars. The piece of quartz discovered is absolutely huge. It's about eight feet in length and is a solid block of crystals like nothing you have ever seen before. It weighs around 2,000 pounds and required some seriously heavy machines to get it out of the mine. And while it's not that unexpected to find quartz in a mine, nobody could ever expect to find a giant chunk worth millions of dollars. The crystal cluster is arguably the most impressive piece to have ever come out of the quarry in Arkansas since people began digging there prior to World War II. Apparently, the reason this giant chunk of quartz is so valuable is because it has a lot of large points that are almost crystal clear. If the points were murky or damaged, it would be worth nothing, but it's basically as pristine as any gemstone can get. Reese Witherspoon's Boot Here's a totally random story. If you have seen the movie Wild, featuring Reese Witherspoon as the solo female hiker who took on the Pacific Crest Trail, you might remember the scene in which Reese Witherspoon throws her boot off the side of a mountain in a fit of frustration. Well, if you ever wondered what happened to that boot, I'm here to tell you all about it. A Washington hiker named Chris Kesting was minding his own business on a hike when he stumbled upon the exact boot from the film. However, this was not done by accident. The guy actually watched the film, recognized the exact location location of the scene where she threw her shoe and decided to go looking for it. If you're wondering why the film crew let the shoe stay in the wilderness as a big piece of litter, they actually tried to find it but couldn't. The film did indeed adhere to the leave no traces behind rule, but they just couldn't find the boot after Reese threw it. And so everyone was actually quite happy that this hiker managed to locate it for them. Pink Grasshopper if you have never seen a pink grasshopper, you're not the only one. These things are super rare. Pink grasshoppers only exist because of a genetic mutation caused by a recessive gene. It's very similar to how albino animals are created, at least according to National Geographic. As hard as these grasshoppers are to find in the wild, a resident in Austin, Texas took a photo of one recently after randomly spotting it in her garden. It's a totally unexpected find, and something that is probably not going to happen twice to the same person. These critters exist in nature, but they very rarely grow to adulthood because predators pick them off super easily. As you can probably imagine, being bright pink and defenseless is not the best situation for an insect. Birds and other predators can easily pick out a pink grasshopper from the sky and snatch it up in an instant. Bullet and Avocado Avocados just keep getting more and more popular. People all over the world have been going crazy in the last few years for avocado. But what happens when you discover a bullet lodged inside of your avocado after purchasing it from a farmer's market? Well, you ask a lot of questions. The last place that you would ever expect to find ammunition is inside an avocado. It just doesn't make sense. How does it grow in there? Who put it in there? The questions go on and on. According to the report from Fox News, the woman who found a bullet in her avocado posted the photos on Reddit and quickly received a lot of similar stories. One user claimed that he found a bullet inside a shipment of coffee beans which allegedly broke the coffee grinder at the place where the person worked. Another user said that they found a nail inside of a potato. 
Apparently, finding weird things inside of fruit is incredibly common. The most likely reason why the bullet ended up in the avocado is because country people like to shoot guns, and if you're shooting guns on the same land on which you grow your crops, eventually a bullet is going to end up inside an avocado. It's just the way things go. Woman found inside tree. There are a lot of sneaky places you could hide a murder victim. Under the stairs, sealed under concrete in your basement, in a grave out in the woods, or jammed inside of an actual tree. In 1943, the body of a female was found stuffed inside the hollow of a tree. This is not the kind of place you expect to find a person's body. To make this story even weirder, whoever murdered this woman was never apprehended, and the woman's identity has never been found. This story has been haunting the Hagley Woods in the United Kingdom for decades. So far as the original story, story goes, the woman was found when four boys were playing in the forest and climbing trees. While climbing one particularly large elm tree, they discovered the woman's body inside its hollow. The police investigated, the body was examined, and it was determined that she had been dead for at least 18 months. Police say that she was murdered of asphyxiation, most likely, and this story was soon put to rest. We will probably never know who put the woman's body in the tree. Considering she was found over 40 years ago, the perpetrator might not even be alive anymore. Out of all these amazing stories, which do you think is the most surprising? From an unexpected fortune hanging on someone's wall to some pretty strange revelations from the world's deepest well, plus the oldest winery ever, here are 10 incredible and unexpected discoveries. New Pterosaur Pterosaurs were winged beasts from the age of the dinosaurs, ranging in size from as large as a fighter jet to as small as an ordinary bird. And while we have known about these flying beasts for a very long time, a team of paleontologists from the United Kingdom discovered a new species of tiny pterosaur completely unexpectedly. This new dinosaur would roughly have been the size of a turkey, but it would have looked a lot more like a modern kiwi. Scientists were incredibly surprised when they discovered the fossil. In fact, they first thought that it was part of a fish, but paleontologists from Portsmouth University and Bath University got together to study the fossil and came to the conclusion that they had discovered a piece of a beak belonging to a whole new prehistoric bird creature. The fossil was actually found in Morocco, and after researchers learned what it belonged to, more digging was done to locate additional pieces of the original fossil. Project researchers then discovered the lower jaw, which matched to the first part found. They slowly began to build an image of what the pterosaur would have looked like. Researchers believed that this newest specimen would have used its very thin beak to sift through the dirt and mud looking for prey, just like how a modern kiwi searches for worms. Tank in a Swamp Deep in the forest of Estonia, a young boy made a rather unexpected discovery when he stumbled upon an old path leading straight into a remote lake. The boy noticed immediately that the tracks in the mud did not look natural. He alerted his parents, who then told their neighbors, and soon pretty much everyone in Estonia was standing at the edge of this lake, trying to figure out what exactly was down there. As it turned out, there was a giant tank hidden inside of the water. The villagers had to bring in a bulldozer and some ropes just to yank the enormous military vehicle out of the mud. How exactly the tank got into the swamp in the first place is a bit of a mystery. Considering the tank was from World War II and in basically perfect condition, it probably got abandoned in the lake so that the Soviet enemies could not get a hold of the vehicle and use their own technology against them. The tank pulled from the lake was a Soviet T-3476A, and back in its day, it was a deadly piece of machinery. What exactly the villagers did with the tank has never been reported. It's doubtful that the thing could run after so long underwater. Maybe they just took some selfies and then went back home. Unexpected Moon Water Apparently, the moon is full of water. In October of 2020, NASA confirmed the presence of water not only on the sunlit surface of the moon, but also in a handful of shadowed places. This was a totally unexpected discovery that suggests there could be water across most of the moon's surface, hidden inside the soil where we cannot see it. This unexpected discovery is going to change our understanding of the lunar surface forever. The discovery was made by a flying observatory station inside of a Boeing 747 that flies above 99% of the Earth's atmosphere. This flying machine is known as Sophia, and researchers used her powerful instruments to detect water molecules inside one of the moon's southern craters. Obviously, there aren't rushing rivers of water, but there is a concentration of roughly 100 to 412 parts per million of water trapped inside a single cubic meter of soil. But don't get too excited, that's not good. According to NASA, the Sahara Desert has 100 times more water than what they just found on the surface of the moon. It's a pretty minuscule amount, but surprising nonetheless. Massive Coral Reef 
This next one is a little closer to home. Scientists in 2020 discovered a giant coral reef inside of the Great Barrier Reef that is blowing people's minds. It's known as a detached coral reef, and it was discovered to be over 1,500 feet high. That's a pretty large shelf of coral. The discovery was made by Australian scientists working on the Schmidt Ocean Institute vessel, Falcor. It was also found completely unexpectedly and is the first attached reef to have been spotted in over 120 years. It was discovered using an underwater robot that live-streamed extremely high-resolution footage to the team aboard the Falcor. While you might be thinking just how boring a giant coral reef is, it's really quite exciting. It shows that even as we continue to explore the ocean, we keep finding new and unknown structures and life. Because that's what this giant reef really is. It's a massive and complex ecosystem standing like a coral apartment complex far beneath the restless ocean waves. Rare Penny if you're sick of science, check out this unexpected discovery that made a boy very wealthy. The boy I'm talking about was only 16 years old when he went to school one day and found that he had a strange penny in his lunch money. It was definitely a penny, but even the kid could tell there was something off about it. As it turned out, the kid was holding in his hand a 1943 Lincoln penny. The penny that he had received in the change from his lunch money was one of only 20 copper coins that had accidentally gotten produced during the Second World War as part of a serious manufacturing error. These coins have been described as the holy grail of mint errors by Heritage Auctions. They are now the crown jewel of any coin collection in America. While only a handful of them have been legitimately identified, there are still believed to be around 10 or 15 floating in circulation somewhere. As for the boy who found one in his lunch money, that happened in Massachusetts back in 1947. He held on to it for 72 years before passing away, at which time his descendants sold it for $204,000 at Heritage Auctions. Accidental Play-Doh Here's a fun one. If you've ever wondered where Play-Doh came from, you're about to find out. A company named Koodle Products was the largest wallpaper cleaner manufacturer on the entire planet. That was until the 1950s when wallpaper buildup wasn't an issue anymore because coal heating was changed to oil, gas, or electricity. There was no more need to clean coal residue off people's wallpaper, and so Koodle Products didn't have much use for their products anymore. But that was when a nursery school teacher related to the owner of the company made a rather unexpected discovery. She opened up the paper one day and saw an article about how wallpaper cleaner could be used for modeling projects. This random discovery would change the face of the company forever. Rather than cleaning wallpaper with their product, they realized they could just change it and market it as a modeling compound for kids. That's when the company really started to make money. Fortune magazine has reported that Play-Doh has sold over 3 billion cans since it debuted in 1956. That's over 700 million pounds of Play-Doh. The Deepest Well when scientists decided it would be a good idea to drill the deepest hole in the world, they knew there would be some unexpected discoveries. And since the Russians began this undertaking with the Kola Super Deep Borehole back in 1970, there have been some pretty weird things found. The goal was for the Russians to drill straight into the mantle of the Earth, but they never did reach it. Nonetheless, over 50 years later, it's still the deepest hole on the planet. Out of all the unexpected discoveries, one of the coolest things found were the fossils roughly 21,000 feet below the surface. This is something that has not been discussed a lot in popular media or science magazines, but it's 100% true. The biggest question is how could there be fossils in granite that deep underground? They were fossils of microplankton four miles beneath the surface of the Earth. Just what exactly is living down there, and what other larger fossils might we find? Unexpected Painting in 1991, a lady was shopping in a San Bernardino thrift store. It was an ordinary day, she was looking for a present for her friend, and she stumbled upon a huge canvas covered in drips and splatters of paint. She thought it was ugly, but she paid for it anyway. She paid a whopping $5. When she showed it to her friend, her friend also thought it was ugly. Her friend also couldn't fit the enormous canvas into her home, so the painting was set up at a garage sale. It just so happened that an art teacher stumbled upon the garage sale and recognized the painting as a Jackson Pollock. As it turns out, the painting was likely done by an abstract expressionist master, and rather than trying to get rid of the painting at a garage sale for $5, the woman who originally bought it is now asking $50 million for the painting. She stumbled upon the unexpected discovery of a lifetime, though it is worth mentioning that the New York Times reported the painting has yet to be 100% verified. The Fish With Hands Evolution is a little confusing. Where did our hands come from? Why do birds have wings and we don't? And what in the name of all that is good in the world is a jellyfish doing even existing? 
it's all very strange. But in any case, a recent discovery has unexpectedly showed one of the closest points scientists have ever come to seeing a vertebrate evolving fingers from fins. The fossil is about 375 million years old. It's also a fish, but what's truly exciting about this new fossil is that its fins have bones comparable to the ones that make up our five digits. This is leading scientific professionals to believe that human beings, bats, and of course monkeys evolved fingers even before leaving the water. This incredible find would mean that the bones inside of a fish's fins began to form something similar to hands even before they managed to crawl out onto the mud. If thinking about this freaks your mind, you're not alone. The oldest winery ever. If you enjoy sitting on the sofa on a Friday night with a nice glass of wine and maybe a book, you will appreciate this next discovery. In the country of Lebanon, which thousands of years ago was the center of the Phoenician Empire, researchers have stumbled upon the oldest winery in the entire country. That makes it the first place where wine was properly made in Phoenicia 2,600 years ago. What's really unexpected is how similar the winemaking process was back then to how it is now. The remains were pretty badly destroyed, but scientists were still able to see how the winery operated. And yes, people stomped on the grapes with their bare feet, and the liquid then flowed into a 1,200-gallon plaster basin. Wine has not changed much in nearly 3,000 years. A researcher from the American University of Beirut told National Geographic that wine was an extremely important trading item for the Phoenicians. Their wine was favored all across the Mediterranean and even in ancient Egypt. This old winery, which was discovered in Tel El Barak, is where it all started. From the infamous legend of the lost Dutchman to the mysterious Spanish gold mines of Ecuador, here are 10 of the most impressive and famous forgotten gold mines. The Lost Dutchman Gold Mine Undoubtedly the most famous lost gold mine in Arizona is the Lost Dutchman. In the late 1800s, when the gold rush was reaching its limits, a German prospector supposedly began showing up in the city of Phoenix with a ridiculous amount of gold ore. According to the historical reports, this guy definitely existed, but whether or not he really did have massive amounts of gold ore is unknown. He apparently started telling people that all the gold he had acquired came from a secret mine located in the Superstition Mountains. However, the German man refused to reveal the mine's location to anyone, and he eventually died in 1891. Seeing how hungry for gold people were back then, it's no surprise that for the following years, people from all over Arizona searched long and hard to find the Lost Dutchman Mine. There were failed expeditions, fake maps being sold, and all kinds of rumors. In 1895, there was even a story about the mysterious mine in the San Francisco Chronicle. However, to this day, nobody has ever found the Lost Dutchman Gold Mine, and other than a few diehard treasure hunters, the mystery of Superstition Mountains and the Hidden Gold has been forgotten. Lost Spanish Gold Mines Far from Arizona in the South American country of Ecuador, a Canadian miner has reportedly discovered the remains of a long-lost road that could lead the way to a forgotten mining center used by Spanish colonizers. The discovery was made by field teams searching for one of the historical gold mining centers supposedly in the area, described in ancient papers from Ecuador, Peru, Spain, and even the Vatican. Spanish colonizers apparently operated very successful gold mines in the area between 1565 and 1606. The Canadian miner is hoping that by tracing the route of the road found by the field teams that he can discover the path once taken to the potentially lucrative gold deposits. The CEO of the company the Canadian miner works for claimed that historical records show that there are forgotten treasures in the area and that gold was definitely produced and cast into ingots to be transported to Quito. Because of this, they assumed the ingots would have been transported using horses or donkeys on a proper road. The mining company believes that at the end of the newly discovered road is a lost wealth of gold. Because this story only just surfaced in 2019, no gold has yet to be found, but it is a very real possibility that somewhere in the Ecuadorian wild is a forgotten gold mine worth a literal fortune. Secret Gold Mine Under the Mountains a man named Adam Palmer has spent the last 10 years trying to find a secret gold mine hidden under the mountains of British Columbia. As reported by the CBC, Adam has spent several weeks out of every summer for the past decade trying to find a mythical forgotten mine known as Lumox Gold. This is located near Pitt Lake, deep in the mountains. Adam's search has taken him down countless miles of logging roads, across icy glaciers, and deep into the coastal forest. However, every adventure has yielded nothing. He has never found evidence of the supposed mine, until now. 
Adam now believes that as of 2019, he knows where the gold mine is hidden. It's in a remote alpine meadow flanked by jagged mountains not farther than 31 miles 50 kilometers from Vancouver. After Adam found an abandoned log cabin, a rusty shovel, and an old chisel, he believes that he's now very close to the location of the mine. Of course, thousands of people have searched for the forgotten mine over the years, apparently worth billions of dollars, and nobody has ever found it. So we just have to wait and see. Do you have any gold? Perhaps gold jewelry? Or even gold coins in a retirement portfolio? Even if you don't have any, your body has tiny, tiny amounts of gold in it. That's right, you have gold inside of you, in amounts almost too small to detect, but it's there. Let me know what you think of that by writing me a comment down below. Then be sure to subscribe if you have not already. There are even more exciting videos coming out very soon, and you don't want to miss them. Lost Josephine Gold Mine The Lost Josephine Gold Mine was first documented in records from Spanish Jesuit priests back in 1650. In these ancient records, the mine is said to be the most valuable deposit of gold in the entire world. However, three decades later, the priests who supposedly found this valuable place were driven out from New Mexico during the 1680 Pueblo Revolution, and the exact location of the mine was subsequently lost and mostly forgotten. But not entirely. In 2013, a treasure hunter claimed to have found the legendary lost Josephine gold mine in the mountains of Utah. This man claims that there's nearly $2 billion worth of gold hidden within his mine. His name is Gary, and he thinks he and his sons are about to get rich. As of 2013, they were just getting the federal government to award them permission to dig for their prize. But as reported by the Daily Mail, the United States Forest Service officials have repeatedly said that the mine does not exist. The officials also don't really like it when treasure hunters deface the natural caves to search for a treasure that's been forgotten for hundreds of years. Nonetheless, Gary and his son obtained a mining permit and got digging, but they have yet to find any gold. Considering this was back in 2013 and Gary still is not rich, it might be safe to say he's digging in the wrong spot. Leech River and the Lost Cave of Gold On Vancouver Island in British Columbia, there is a place called Leech River. The river is named after an Irishman, Peter Leach, who came to British Columbia in 1858. According to BC Gold Adventures, Peter Leach found gold near the river in 1864. After his initial discovery, the entire town was flooded with gold miners and in less than a month at least 3,000 men had come along to reap the rewards. By 1876, an estimated $100,000 of gold had been recovered. However, actual value is undetermined. Most of the gold in the area was dug out of crevices in the bedrock or from the riverbed, but according to legend there is still an untapped source of gold in the area. There is supposed to be a small cave with a massive vein of gold extending deep into it, but nobody knows where it is. The first guy who found it apparently went on a drinking binge, and when he woke up, he could not remember the location of the cave filled with gold. Today, the cave still remains a half-forgotten legend that may or may not exist. The Abandoned Gold Mines of Death Valley Death Valley in California is one of the most inhospitable places on the planet. It boasts some of the most extreme temperatures that you can imagine. Death Valley was also once full of gold mines. For a few decades in the early 1800s, Death Valley was full of gold miners. But it didn't last for long. No large production of gold ever occurred, and eventually most of the mines were abandoned. But after the decline, there was a sudden spike of interest in Death Valley around 1900. Of course, this did not last long either because the 1907 financial crisis brutalized all the mining operations in the USA, and by 1915, all gold mining in Death Valley was over. Today, the remnants of a short-lived mining industry are mostly forgotten. The entirety of Death Valley is now a national park, and its history of gold has been more or less forgotten by the public. However, it is widely believed that some gold could still be found in the area, but nobody will ever find it because all prospecting and mining has been banned, as Death Valley is now considered a national monument. The Lost Bill Kelly Mine in West Texas, the Chihuahua Desert is a pretty miserable environment. This place was the death of many early pioneers who disappeared in its extensive mountains or were killed by the Apache. There were also Mexican raiders, dangerous outlaws, and quite a few venomous snakes. This was not the kind of place you wanted to hang out. However, somewhere in the remote country, it's said that the Bill Kelly Mine is still hidden and that it contains a fortune of ridiculous proportions. Bill Kelly supposedly found his gold mine at the age of only 19, way back in the late 1800s. He had been living on a cattle ranch when he stumbled upon the gold mine in the mountains, and after telling the people he lived with about it, they simply laughed at him. So Bill went and got some of the gold that he found appraised, and it turned out that it was worth a fortune. 
Bill ended up running from the cattle ranch out of fear that the people he lived with would kill him and steal the location of the gold mine, and for the rest of his life, Bill passed from cattle ranch to cattle ranch, every now and then passing on the story of the mysterious gold mine until his death. It was never properly mined, but so many people found out about it that it became a legend in West Texas. Today, it's said that the Bill Kelly mine is on the Mexican side of the Rio Grande. Many men have claimed to have found the mine, but there has been no evidence of it. Whether the place truly exists or not is anyone's guess, and the legend of Bill Kelly has mostly been forgotten. Forgotten Yukon Gold Town not only do mines go forgotten, but so too do the towns that once catered to the gold miners. In the Yukon Territory of Canada, a place called Kino City is perhaps the most forgotten gold rush town in existence that still has a population. There are now only a few people living in this forgotten town, which at the time of the gold rush had been full of residents getting rich off the minerals deep in the earth. Kino City began as a Swedish prospector's claim in 1919, and it became one of the largest producers of silver ever in Canada. But in 1989, the mine closed down, the people left, and the entire region was pretty much forgotten. According to the 2016 census, there are now approximately 20 people living in Kino City. The city is so small that it relies on drinking water trucked in by the government. Their groundwater is full of uranium, arsenic, and other dangerous minerals. There's no more treasure left in the forgotten mine just outside of town, and it's probably just a waiting game until the 20 residents pack up and leave for more fertile ground. The Legend of the Cement Mine when the legend of the cement mine was born, the gold boom was already nearly at its end in California. People didn't think that there could be a new mine that they didn't already know about, but alas, in 1857 when two German migrants were wandering through the Sierra Nevada, they stumbled upon a giant hoard of gold. However, tragedy struck immediately. Before the men could properly excavate the site, one of them fell and broke their leg, and the other was forced to leave his friend in the wilderness to die. Such was the way back in the 1800s. After reaching the nearby town, the surviving German told the locals about the mine, and a bunch of prospectors set up camp in the eastern Sierra to try and find what is now known as the cement mine. Even Mark Twain joined the search in the 1870s, leaving behind a brief account of his experiences in the publication, Roughing It, that came out in 1872. Even though so many people went in search of the lost cement mine, it was never found. In 1980, a plaque was installed near the Owens River Road with a dedication to the prospectors and the mystery surrounding the elusive treasure. The Dutch Oven Mine of San Bernardino the story of the Dutch oven mine of San Bernardino began in 1894 when a railroad worker was surveying the Clipper Mountains in California. This railroad worker supposedly happened upon an old abandoned house built of stone, and farther along he came upon a spring which led over a hill and into an old Spanish camp filled with old mining tools. Close to the camp was also a mine shaft allegedly rich with gold. The railroad worker spent the day wandering around the camp and ended up finding nuggets of pure gold stuck inside of an old Dutch oven. He took the nuggets, returned to his camp, fled to Los Angeles, and drank the money he earned from the gold until he was broke. He tried to find the mine again afterwards, but it eluded him at every turn until he eventually gave up. All these years later, the story of the Spanish camp and the Dutch oven filled with gold is nearly completely forgotten. Nobody has ever come forward to claim the find, and to this day it's undetermined whether the camp was ever real at all. Do you think there's any gold left in these forgotten mines? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and thanks for watching. See you again soon for another awesome video.